So in this presentation, uh, I want to look at some of Excel's basic built-in statistical function, and it, and it has a lot of them. Uh, it, it covers most of the statistical calculations that are, that are commonly used, the, the mean and the median and that kind of thing. Uh, and it also has uh, some built-in counting functions that are nice because uh, the, these functions are going to let us kind of build our own formulas to cover the, you know, the things that Excel doesn't have built in. So on this first page here, I want to look at some of those counting functions. So I'll start with this count function. And notice what Excel does here. As I start to type, it gives me this, this little description of what the function is going to do. So that, that's this nice little, little hint there. So this count function, in my head, it's always a little unusual. For some reason, I expect this count function to count every cell that has something in it, and it doesn't. It only counts the cells with numbers. So if I select the range over here with my data, that's, that's 25 cells I selected. Only 16 of them have numbers in them. This count A function, on the other hand, this one does what I th always think the count is going to do. This one counts the number of cells that have anything in them. And add it. there's only one blank here in, in, this, in, this, in this grid, so I expect this to return 24. And finally, there's this count blank function, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. It counts the number of cells that have nothing in them. And for our data here, that should be 1. All right, now, what it, one thing Excel doesn't have, it doesn't have a function that just counts cells with text. All right, and that's OK, because I can, I can build this using the functions that I already have. For example, what, what am, what am I going to do here? I'm going to count all of the cells that have, that have text in, that, that have anything in them. That gives me the number of cells that have some value in them. And I'm going to subtract from that the number of cells that have numbers in them. And that should return uh, 8, because you, you look at your data, there, there's the 8 cells there in the headers that have text. Sure enough, that's what I got back. All right, so now going back to Excel's functions, this count if function takes, is going to take two things. I'm going to give it a range and a criteria. So for example, I'm going to pick my data again, and I'm going to say 2. And what, what that's going to do is, is it's going to count the number of cells that are equal, that, that have data in them that is equal to 2. And you can look over the data there and see there are 2 cells that do that. Uh, I could also do text here. Text you have to put in quotation marks. So if I put A there, this is going to return 1 because there's only one cell in the data with an A in it. Now, what really makes this count if function nice is I can put ranges. So for example, if I want to count the number of cells greater than 4, I could put greater than 4 in there, and Excel counts just those cells in column I that have the 5, 7, 8, 9, and it, and it returns 4. Now, this count if function is nice. I've, I've used it all the time uh, over the course of my career here. But it, it is limited in that I could only give it one criteria. And sometimes I want to do more than that. For example, uh, sometimes I want to count the number of cells that are between two values. For example, I might want to count the number of cells that, are be that have values between 3 and 5. So this count if s function lets me do that. I'm going to start by giving it my data range again. And I'm going to say greater than or equal to 4. And now I can keep doing this. I'm going to give it the data range again. And I'm going to say less than or equal to 5. And this is going to give me the cells that match both of those criteria that are greater than or equal to 4 and less than or equal to 5. And you look at the data over there, you'll see there's five of them. So the four fours in column H and the one five in column I. And sure enough, that returned to five. All right, so let's see what we can do with this, with these functions. Let's say I, I want to do a frequency distribution for this data. So I'm, I'm going to start by putting in the upper and lower bounds of my classes. And then I'm going to ask Excel to do some counting. I'm going to say count if S. And I'm going to select my data. 
and I'm going to say greater than or equal to 1. That's my lower bound. And I'm going to say, I'm going to select the data again. And I'm going to say less than or equal to 3. And go over here and check, right? That's these values, and there are eight of them. So that, that's great. My, the function is doing what I want. It's, it's not that I don't trust the function. It's that, you know, I don't, I don't always trust the way I entered it, right? So I'm, I'm checking myself there more than I'm checking Excel. All right, now I need to do this again, right? Because I need to do it in these remaining two cells, and I'd like to be able to just copy and paste, all right? But look at what happens when I do that. Okay, first, look at the range I was looking at here. I was looking at F2 through I5. Look at what happens down here. Now it's looking at F3 through I6. I copied down a row. So that's what Excel did to my formulas. It, it tried to adjust the formula to match where it's located. And that, that's nice, and we're, we're going to get some mileage out of that in a minute here, but for the data range, I don't want it to do that. So to stop it, I'm going to put dollar signs in front of all of the, the, the cell locations there. Now when I copy this down, you notice how they didn't change, right? It's F2 through I5 in both of them. Okay, but now, now I still have a problem, right? Because th this is looking at 1 and 3, and I needed to look at 4 and 6. And yeah, I, I mean, I could go in there and manually change it. Yeah, but I really don't want to do that. All right, that, if I have a big frequency distribution, maybe I have 15 classes, I don't want to have to do that over and over again. Right? It's, it's just going to be a lot of manual labor. Not only is manual labor tedious, but it, it has a tendency to be error prone. So I, I really like to avoid it. And Excel is actually going to help me out there again. I'm going to take this one out. And I'm going to say and, and I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to click on the cell over here that has my lower bound. And what what Excel is going to do is, and I, I'll hit enter here just so you can see what happens. Notice that the number didn't change, right? It's still saying eight. Um, it, Excel took the value from cell M3 and it dropped it in here and and used that for the formula. So I'll do the same thing over here with my upper bound. And the form and the results stay the same, which is which is great. That's what I wanted. Now watch what happens when I copy and paste. Here we went from looking at M3 and N4 to looking at M4 and N4. All right, the number the numbers updated, the row numbers updated based on you know how how I had moved down one row. And in this case, that's really helping me out. It means I don't have to go in there and manually update these formulas. I'll copy it in here one more time. And there you go. Now, now I have my frequency distribution. And what's really great about using this using this method, um, maybe you decide that you don't like these classes. Maybe you decide that y you know it, you you need more classes to kind of drill down into the data. So I can change the class limits, and notice what happens over here. Right, my frequency counts automatically adjust. I know that this lower bound is one more than the upper bound before it. And you know, I went from one to two. Here I have to go from three to four, so I'll say plus one again. And now I can just copy these down. And there's my frequency distribution. Well, it, it, that's mostly my frequency distribution. And when we, when we do these, what, what we want to see here, I, I don't want to have this one in column M and two in column uh, N. What I, what I really want is to have this say 1-2, right? That's, that's how I put the classes in a frequency distribution. So I'm going to have Excel do that for me. I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to go to the lower limit. I'm going to use this and function to kind of build my expression here. Now I'm, I'm going to put the dash that I want in between them and the lower limit. And look at what Excel does, right? It automatically created that formula for me, and I'm going to paste that down. And now it has kind of the, the class definitions the way we expect them to look. So let me pretty this up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to put some headings, and I'm going to make those bold, center everybody. And I'll put 
some borders in here to make it clear where the separation is in the data. And if I, if I were really doing this in a professional context, I, I wouldn't want I wouldn't want anybody to see these numbers that I'm using to build the classes and to do the frequency counts. So I would hide these columns. And there's kind of a, a nicely formatted frequency distribution for this data. All right, so let, let's move on here uh, and take a look at uh, Excel's central tendency functions. Remember, these are functions that we use to find kind of the middle of a data set. So Excel has a function that will do the mean. It, it's not, mean is not what it's called. Excel uses kind of the more common English word average. I'm going to select by data. Now notice what I did here. All right, I didn't just select the data, I selected the headings as well. And that, that's a little bit of a thing because I, I, don't, I don't want those to be included in the calculation. So let's see what Excel does. All right, Excel came up with this number for the, for the mean. And I, I want to check this. I'm, I'm hoping that Excel, when it did this, that it ignored all of the non-numeric cells. Right, specifically when, when it did the division, right? You remember when you're finding the, the mean, you have to divide by the number of data values. I'm I'm hoping that it used 16 here, right? Because there are 16 cells with numbers rather than 25. All right, so let let's check it. We we can actually create our own average function. I'm going to add up all of the numbers, and then I'm going to divide by a count of the numbers. And hopefully, that's going to get me the same result. Yeah, sure enough, excellent, it did. Excel was, in fact, uh, doing what I wanted it to do there. And also, you, you can see here how we, we can use some of those built-in functions, right, to not only to build our own statistical functions, but sometimes, uh, if, if we feel it's necessary, to, to check the ones that are built in. All right, so median, Excel has a built-in median function, and Excel also has a built-in mode function. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't have a built-in mid-range. Remember that the mid-range is kind of the halfway point between the biggest and smallest value in the data. And this is another situation where we can build our own. I'm going to have Excel find the maximum value, and I'm going to have Excel find the minimum value, and I'm going to divide that by 2. And there you go. It, it, Excel is... Uh, letting me find the, the, excuse me, Excel is letting me calculate the mid-range that way. All right, so uh, moving on here to into our last category, we have these variation functions. Uh, look at the standard deviation first. You know, the, the formula for standard deviation is, that's the really kind of messy one. You have to find the mean, subtract every data value from it, Square and add up results, and it, it, it's a just kind of a mess. Fortunately, Excel does have a standard deviation function, so we it, that one is built in, uh, and it does not, however, have a range function. Uh, this one we're going to have to do for ourselves. Remember, the range is the distance between the highest and lowest values, so that's going to be the maximum value minus the minimum value. And there's our range. All right, so hopefully now you, you, you've gotten an idea for the basic functions that Excel provides uh, and how we can use some of those functions to, to do calculations e even in areas where Excel didn't provide uh, a minimum function, uh, where, where Excel didn't provide a built-in function you know, to do the calculation that we needed.